welcome to Uncommonly Good MTG. I am your host, the venerable, the noble, the well-educated Dr. Suckett. Tonight, I am bringing to you a deck I found over at Aether Hub called Boros Life Gain Spirit. This is what we got going on. We've got a uh, cleric class that's provided that uh, that doubly like life gain going on, and it helps to pump up your creatures. As whenever you gain life, it pumps up a creature that you control and brings creatures back from the battle the graveyard to the battlefield. We got the Luminarch who as creatures come to play, you gain one life. So then that will allow you to uh, put out plus one, plus one counters on it. And then, then as he becomes his uh, disturbed version of himself, then you gain life as creatures leave the battlefield. So there's a lot of life gain going on here. Faithful Absence is your white version of creature destruction and also takes out Planeswalkers, which is fantastic. Now Revitalize... Gain three card, gain three life, draw cards. So that's great, especially in this one where gaining life gives you so much going on there. Voice of the Blessed, this is one of those dudes that just totally blossoms when you're gaining life. Lower Hold Excavation, I'm not sure about this card. I mean, I've played it before in a Velomachus deck, and it does its thing. But um, a lot of times I feel like you're just throwing away your cards for very little effect. So we'll see. We'll see how this thing holds out. Uh, Sacred Fire, I mean, this is what Boros is all about. I remember, like, the original version that came out when Ravnica first came out was you paid two like this, and you got three and three. Now, they didn't have flashback on it, but still, you got three and three for two, which was sweet. Now, obviously, we think that's too powerful today, but uh, and I kind of wish we had those, you know, from the olden days. Uh, Shatter Skull Smashing, I mean, it's good to have because it's extra lands if you need it. Other than that, you have some some bit of spot removal for low-end creatures, unless you happen to have a bunch of mana available. Uh, Katilda, you know, she's not really holding out for the enchantments in this deck, but she's holding out for the spirits. And man, Katildas are so good, especially if you're going up against vampires. But you got that flying lifelink, and then she just blossoms. And then even if she gets killed, you can still make one of your creatures into a Katilda Jr. there, right? Uh, Skyclave's good at taking out the low-end stuff. He needs a spirit, which is going to pump up Katilda. Uh, Curse of Hospitality, which um, makes all the creatures attacking the cursed person have trample. And then whenever a creature deals combat damage to an enchanted player, that player exiles the top card of the library until the internet creature control may play the card and then spend mana as though it had mana of any color. I can't tell what that does. <laughs> all right. Angel Fire Ignition. So it just it pumps dudes up and gives them everything until the end of the turn you know that that could, that could maybe win it for you and the vulnerable war singer has vigilance and trample is a three three and whatever damage he does to a player you can go rifling through your graveyard and bring things back to the battlefield yeah in all this case he's doing three and everybody else from here down is three or less so he is recursion incarnate I guess that's where I'd want to put that Angel Fire Ignition, just try to keep that guy alive. What does this guy do? He uh, He's a Spirit Lord, and he gives them Trample and Haste, which is fantastic. He's right, sitting right there with Mjolnir. Uh, whenever another non-token creature dies, exile if you do, create a token that's a copy of the creature. Copy of it, that's fantastic. Except for it's a Spirit, and when this creature leaves the battlefield, return the exiled card to the owner's graveyard. Well, whatever, okay. I guess you just can't have the spirit of it and it at the same time, but they wanted to let you have it. So that guy is awesome in this deck. At least he should be. So we got a bunch of lands and a dual land. The other thing I'd be worried about here is that, I mean, why aren't we playing some man lands? Because we're, we're worried about speed or something. And then, you know, of course, fuel the runes because if man lands are the worst. So I would definitely mix these up if I were to keep this permanently. But anyways, that's what we got going on, and we just need to see how well this thing's going to do. Let's try it out. All right, we're playing against Lenard. Without an O in his name, Lenard. All right, we got three mana and good amount of stuff. Let's keep it going. And anything using slow? Was it two or something? That's fine. Play white, put out the third class. I'm going to go into the Voice of the Blessed next. I'll need two white for that, though. Alright, I'm fine. 
Gonna try to race against the blue at this point. In black, okay. Nothing I have to gain in life, so uh, this isn't going anywhere at any particular moment. I'm gonna hold off, try not to commit all my forces immediately. Uh, let's put it on this guy. There we go. Why did that happen? Let's see. I gained life there, apparently. Oh, this guy's life gain, that's why. Oh, no. I'm glad I didn't commit everything at that point. All right, I'm playing fast. Any sort of delay just pisses me off. Pop, 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 pop. Hey, you keep drawing your cards there, bud. Back in the saddle again. You think he's going to fry us again? All right, so he's got to got something going on. You know, he's got to take us out. If he tries about a creature, I'll just faithful absence it. He's going to have to lay down some anger, unfortunately, for him. All right, there we go. Good game. Party on. This game we're going up against the Blue Baron. Better not be playing blue, my friend. Or I'll be space pissed. All right, so we got two mana. And let's keep it. Okay, so... We'll play the slow one first since I got nothing better to do this turn. Voice of the Blessed. Sacred Fire to get lead down some cover fire. That's a weird card. What are we playing here that requires that? Some sort of uh the scoot swarm. Black. Alright, so I need another white is what I need right at the moment. All right, Boros, do what you can do. I need six to be able to play that again. I'm riding up on four. Curse of Hospitality. I love, love, love that card. Question is, is this guy going to be trying to cast two cards in a turn? He's a little choked at the moment. That guy's got Death Touch. Let's put that out. And no attacks. Because we're going to roll out some Katilda action here. And I really don't care if she dies because her enchantmentness is going to be awesome. Plus, I got a second one of them. Five, six, how did that happen? I'm 
Okay, well anyways, Mana, Katilda. And uh yeah, Luminar Park and Veteran, why not? I'm not Oh that sucks. Alright. Uh we are no tax and in turn. What's going to be great to a certain degree is if Katilda gets killed, I can then enchant Voice of the Blessed, and then it's protection from vampires. Oh, I, Katilda will be able to help me across the board. I really can't do anything about Purveyor there. Uh, pass the blockers. Did I block it? There we go. Block. So that's going to keep at least a few points of damage off me. That's the thing, is that these Katildas can't die to these vampires. Alright, so that death touchy guy is holding me back at the moment. I send them in. Let's just send them in. Because none of them can block him, I don't believe. He's got protection from vampires. Right, there we go. Now we got a flyer. We got a beefed up super flyer. That boy is super fly. Oh, jeez, Louise. Uh, let's send her in. Oh, I had vigilance, huh? I, what does that thing do to me? It gets plus one for each blood file the team player controls. That's a lot. I'm just just token them up. I mean, they're going to get plus seven apiece. That sucks. And all that trample. So there's three of them. That's 21 points. And I'll be able to kill one of them.
I know he's trying to find his way around me. It's like I almost need to kill my own Katilda just so I can spread her out. Oh, not another one of these jerks. Come on, you could do it, Duffy Moon. My turn. Oh, well, that worked out well. I could have done that a long time ago. What just happened? Hmm. Okay, let's do this now. I'm trying to see if I can find anything good here and get rid of these things. At the same time. Nice. Here's another guy. Another Katilda. Is this just Disturb? Can I not cast at this point? That's probably what the deal is. I should have played it before. Let's just go and put one of these guys out. Fully loaded. I gotta make it through more. That was nice of him, though, to give me the opportunity. Next to combat. Send in this guy, who's protection from vampires. Down to six. All right, there we go. So next turn, I've got Trample, Life Leak, Indestructible, Haste. That should do it. Yeah, that's just the, that's the call for the Disturb price. That's all it was. That's what you get for specializing in vampires. Suck it. Victory. And we're going up against Blurp for Derps. Blurp for Derps. That's pretty decent. I appreciate your name. And we got a fairly okay hand. Let's keep it. So we'll throw out white, put out the Luminarch, and then just start revitalizing until we get something good. Hey there, little fishy. Wink. The dragon's asleep. We're up too late tonight. And here we go. And we'll go ahead and draw our card. That's looking good.
All right, three and... Gosh, I think we should go for it. Yep. And there we go. And he's holding on to something. All right, all attack. I don't think we're gonna be seeing much in the vampire, the vampire persuasion in this in this uh, opponent. My guess is that we'll see either spirits or enchantments. Yeah, I'm not sure we need to waste the, scat the Shatter Skull as a land right now. I guess I can always pay the uh, price to make it come out of as quickly as possible if I need it. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, the Faithful Absence is looking good against uh, Krusty Crab up there. Throwing that away, it's either it's too expensive or he's got some recursion action going on. My guess is the recursion. I mean, pretty much the Krusty Crab is the point of that deck if it's in it. Yeah, I am going to hold on. This guy's digging. Let's go, Joe. He threw away another lobster pot. All right. And it got him down to 17 after like a hundred attacks so far. Uh, that would probably be a, a doom scar, would be my guess. Can't do much about that. Don't need it to be exiled. That was kind of bad on for us. I'm going to bring him back here. A bunch of people, potentially. So I just got to get that venerable guy out there. like to have another mana before I do it. There we go. Oh, resolve. Sorry. Of course, that's it. <laughs> do I really care at this point? Now my only protection is that uh, Sky Cyclave Apparition, but he can only take out things with mana of four or less. There we go.
Yeah, if they get that uh, big old lobster out, we're in trouble. Let's go blurp. Even your dragon's getting bored. Guys, making it drag out. I think I've done like a hundred points of damage to him so far. And he's gonna try to steal cards from me. That's that's just nice. Trox, roll. Uh, what can I do about him? Nothing in particular. What do I need? Four. I can do it. Now we're going to start losing pretty big time. The game's gone too long. The pendulum's starting to swing his way. He's got like a billion mana. And I've only got four. He hasn't been digging for it either. I guess I've just been not getting it. That's what a control deck does. Yeah, I'm losing it fast here. All right, let's see. My other lower hold. I don't need to put out another creature because I'll just die quick. And he, I don't need to provide any more slugs to this mix. I can't even dig for the 3-2 spirit creatures yet. God, I'm kind of hoping that the, the lore holds are going to win the day for me at this point. Yeah, okay. Ooh, I could have used that last one. Let's see, so he's going to gain some life now, apparently. Come on, uh, what is this thing called? Faithful Absence. Come on, you can do it. Faithful Absence. Come on, give up your turn, blurp. Okay, that's not going to do it. Uh, let's see. Can I do it to him? Yeah, sure I can. Let's speed this crap up. I'll need six to be able to cast it. Flashback. And we're done. In turn. Ha, <laughs> I got a lot of life. I might be able to. I might be able to make this way out. <laughs> Rely upon the lore holds to grind this game out. Yeah. Oh, dang it! He's gonna start bouncing this stuff around. Still, on my turn, I can uh, put it back in. He can't do much about that. But still, 15 a turn. It's gonna be 16 next. All right, double up on this, biatch. And we're done. 
Oh, he's got 13. How the hell did that happen? Where did he get all that life from? That cheating jerk? Okay, things aren't looking so good now. Yeah, I don't have another turn here. I mean, I could put out a blocker, but... In fact, that's exactly what I'm gonna have to do. These guys are too big. I could do this very well to lose us. Grab that enchantment. And he's gonna take more life. They put out one of my veterans, they'll just die immediately. I don't have the mana to do anything else here. Yep, that was a good uh, block on his part. All I can do is pass at this point. I mean, what can I do here? I can't even do that. I can put it out. Uh, Inner's tap, there we go. Next. In turn, take your two points of damage, suckerfish. One, two. Ah, uh, it was one for me. Okay, well, fifteen is not going to hold up against sixteen. Ah, the sweet release, the sweet release of death. All right, so this is Borrow's Life Gain Spirit. As you can see, it was a mighty little deck. It definitely had a lot of chops. Um, it's not, it doesn't have much of an, of a, like an end game. Like you get to the third stage of a game and if you haven't won by then, you're gonna die. But yeah, if you, you have a strong chance of taking people out by mid game, you know, you get to turn five, six, seven. This guy is gonna potentially be beefy and going to crazy town on people he has this thing has the ability to just explode in power i mean plus with all of that life gain you're getting all the time i mean you can weather a lot of storms with it so who was the real star here i mean i don't know i mean the big thing was that voice of the blessed was just going to town catilda was fantastic with all the spirits coming into play and plus, you know, when she go, if you're going up against those vampire tribals, there is nothing they can do about Katilda. And I love the way that if Katilda dies, that you can then make somebody else into a junior Katilda who's got all the same powers. So, yeah, I mean, this is really, I think, all about Katilda. You know, I, I, I'm going to say Voice of the Blessed, but um, I think the venerable, the venerable War Slinger can be really good if you can keep it alive. And I think Angel File would probably help out a ton with doing that. I didn't really have that opportunity, but but there you go. Um, I think this guy is fantastic in this deck. Uh, you know, he's a 4-5, and just the way he just keeps things going, um, as far as keeping your creatures back into play, and it's an exact copy of them. So that's a great way of keeping your guys alive and kicking. You know, this is a really funny guy over here is Lore Hold Excavation. You know, I was very hesitant about that card at first. I have had a lot of experience with it. I know what it does. But in this game, it was potentially going to win that control game. So don't don't write it off. This card is a grind. It will, you know, it helps you out or hurts the other person. And you have a couple, two, three of them out there. That's a lot and adds up quickly. The other guy, though, I mean, he luckily for him, he had a lot of life gain. Like direct life gain. I mean, complete... Uh, is that really a waste? I would normally say yes, but, you know, this guy who used it for great advantage. And if it hadn't been for that, I mean, our lore holds and our other guys probably would have done a great job of pounding him out. I mean, I probably did like a billion damage to him. But, yeah, he was able to hold it together until he managed to get his big boys out. So if I were to redo this deck, it would definitely be in the land category. I mean, I don't know if they're just trying to be fast lands or something, but uh, you definitely need a little bit more protection from land lands. And maybe even some man lands of your own, just in case. 
So anyways, that was Boros Life Gain. I'm going to give this deck a A-. minus. I think it was definitely a competitive deck. I definitely think it was lots of fun to play. And yeah, you're going to get beat from time to time, but I think you're going to win a bunch. You know, I think you're going to win two out of three times with this thing. I think it's going to be pretty good. And I, I think I'm going to look forward to playing with it more in the future. That's it for now. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. From all of us here in the secret underground headquarters of Uncommonly Good MTG, have a great day. See you next time. Later.